Eureka's Jack Lang is yet another high upside offensive lineman committed to Missouri. And boy, I could get used to this. And if you read the tea leaves for the future, it seems like Missouri fans better get used to it. So let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and certainly a man who can no longer dunk two-handed like Logan Riker, despite being, well, more than 100 pounds lighter than that young man. Did you all see the Missouri football dunk contest online yesterday? That was some impressive stuff. I think Dara Smith maybe got the W there for the most impressive dunk, in my humble opinion. But you know what? Speaking of offensive linemen, just a ton of linemen to talk about today, including how about Marcus Bryant? Yes, my gamble paid off on yesterday's program. He committed to the Tigers. Let's talk about how he maybe shuffles the offensive line for 2000. And 24. But you know what? I do remind you that, want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And of course, I do want to start today's program by talking about Jack Lang. And yes, it is pronounced. Lang, ladies and gentlemen, don't let the silent E at the end fool you. That's firsthand information, by the way, from the young man himself, Jack Lang. So no controversy there, but not a lot of controversy on his commitment either. It would appear. It seems like he's locked in to Missouri, no pun intended, but an offensive lineman again from Eureka, Missouri, Wisconsin, Michigan, Notre Dame, Ole Miss, Nebraska. Those are some that's some pretty stiff competition, not only in terms of offensive line heavy schools, schools that have put a lot of linemen in the NFL in recent years, and of course the defending national champions in the Michigan Wolverines, but some real NIL players as well. So Missouri is a heavy hitter right now in terms of recruiting in just about every way you can possibly imagine. And I would say in terms of coaching as well, Brandon Jones appears to be rather quickly moving up the ranks as one of the most respected offensive line coaches in the country. And obviously that paid big dividends on the field for Missouri last year. Sure appears to be paying some huge dividends on the recruiting trail right now as well. Now, there has been a lot of debate this cycle on who exactly the top player in Missouri is. But according to On3, ESPN, and 24-7, they have Jack Lang as the top player in the state. Rivals really is the outlier there, having him as the fourth player in the state. One thing I like to scout when it comes to linemen, what is their future size going to look like? Well, at six foot eight. 275 pounds. One thing I noticed about Jack Lang right off the bat, he's got kind of a skinny face for a kid who's 275 pounds. What does that tell me? That tells me that he can be 300 pounds without a whole lot of effort by mostly just working out, continuing to train, and just allowing the time to take its course because he is going to fill out over time. What is he, 17, 18 years old right now? A kid who's already that size is naturally just going to fill into his frame even more. And why is that important? Well, obviously, you can put weight on lots of people, but if you're six foot eight, you may not necessarily, just because you're six foot eight, that doesn't mean you're designed to carry around 300 pounds. I'm a relatively tall guy. I'm not quite six foot eight. I promise you, my body is not designed to carry around 300 pounds. Well, I think Jack Lane is. Lang is, and he can do it pretty comfortably. At least that's what I'm assuming at this point. The point, the overall point I'm trying to make is if you if you have the type of frame that can naturally be an SEC sized offensive lineman, that's your long term prospects are a lot better because if you're putting on more weight than your body can naturally carry, 
that's going to that's going to cause a lot of problems long term back problems knee problems ankles whatever it might be energy levels and conditioning as well so to me lang a really interesting prospect here on a bunch of different levels now according to lang i also thought this was an interesting perspective from lang too he said quote Growing up as a Mizzou fan, they've just quite, quite frankly, not been good. So this is something that I really haven't experienced before, and it's exciting to see. So obviously he's talking about this past season, the 2023 Tigers. Hey, if we didn't break through and have a massively great season, 11-2, and two, Cotton Bowl, the whole deal, maybe Jack Lang doesn't come here. According to him, again, that that that's perspective there is interesting because obviously we as Missouri fans know it had been a while since Missouri had had a really good breakout type season that filled up for O field and got everybody in the state excited probably go back to 2014 for that before last season but when you remember oh yeah now it's been so long that these kids that have been that are currently being recruited by Missouri 2023 is basically all they have to hang their hat on their hats on because 2024 I mean Jack Lang was a small child at that point well he was probably a relatively big child but you you understand what I'm trying to say here Lang continues here I truly believe that if we get a good class and with the roster they have right now I believe that Missouri can go pretty deep in the playoffs and possibly win a national championship so again, all of that perspective, the short perspective that, of course, he has as a teenager, of course, all of us had when we were teenagers as well, that perspective can change very, very quickly. And right now, the perspective, the, the bias toward Missouri is all positive right now. Missouri is sort of viewed as the cool place to be in state, out of state, the whole deal. And again, that just shows for the umpteenth time why the 2024 season is going to be so important for Missouri to capitalize on that momentum. And as I alluded to earlier, Missouri is hot on the trail and tail, I guess I should say, of a, of a bunch of other really good offensive linemen in the high school class as well. Jack Lang, excuse me, said, he really wants to get in touch with Michael Fasusi, one of the highest ranked players really in, in the class period, certainly among linemen as well. He's from the Dallas area. Another Texas guy, Lamont Rogers from Mesquite, Texas. He's not ranked quite as highly as Fasusi, but still a big time prospect in his own right, has an Alabama offer, among others. He's thought to possibly even be a Missouri lean at this point if you look at some of the recruiting services and their predictions out there. But when it comes to the more present of the Missouri offensive line, obviously Marcus Bryant, if you follow the program, you listened yesterday, you know I, I went out on a bit of a limb yesterday and admitted so, saying I think Marcus Bryant's going to commit, so we're just going to talk about him. Well, fortunately, yesterday, a few hours after I posted the show, he made it official, saving me from any potential embarrassment. Thank you very much, Marcus Bryant. But you know what? I had some people questioning is, hey, does this really mean that he's going to play tackle for Missouri? I thought that's why Caden Green came here. Well, you know what? Let's talk about how this move could very well shuffle the Missouri offensive line for 2024. Let's definitely talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan, it's halftime, the scoreboard is not looking so hot. You're feeling down and not sure you can pull off a comeback, so that's when you got to dig deep, lift up your head and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, self, and pull off some bank heist and take out as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. What a beautiful sentiment that is. So, you know what? That's right, the smash hit mobile game, Monopoly Go, lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do in this game, including countless dynamic Monopoly leaderboards. And 
You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with an actual wrecking ball like Miley Cyrus. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends if you're not a total sociopath. Work with your friends to crack open community chess and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there. Put on your game face and download Monopoly Go. Now free on the App Store or Google Play. And Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And speaking of some of those great deals, just check out this afternoon, if you want to go last minute this afternoon, sit, check out the Toronto Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals at Kauffman Stadium this afternoon. You can get dugout box tickets, 9% off, just $20 all in per ticket right now on the Game Time app. And with my code, guess what? It'll be even cheaper. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Ga download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E -E -E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app, last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available on YouTube and wherever you get audio podcasts, including now on the Sirius XM app. And by the way, you can check out the Kansas City Royals and the Toronto Blue Jays. 110 this afternoon is the first pitch on the Sirius XM app or on your radio dial channel 179. And once again, thank you to a former first-team All-AAC offensive lineman Marcus Bryant for officially committing to the Tigers yesterday and saving me any potential embarrassment, or even worse, frankly, having to redo that show and post it again. Who wants to, get, who wants to do double the work for the same amount of pay? Certainly not this podcaster, but here's the thing with Marcus Bryant. He's a big time guy because who else wanted him? Well, number one, Washington, who made the college football playoff yet last season, making their move to the Big Ten here. TCU, UCF, Texas Tech, Missouri beat out all of those those programs for Marcus Bryant's services. And at six foot eight, well, he certainly seems like a left tackle to me. It seems like that's where he's going to stay. Now, I had some people in my comments saying that, now, wait a second, I thought Caden Green from Oklahoma, he transferred and was playing left tackle this spring. So what's the deal there? Well, the deal is, if you're an everyday or you'll, you're all you're well aware of this, but let me catch up everybody who doesn't listen every day. And by the way, there's new people all the time, including my new buddy Clark, who I met at D-Rose the other day. But the thing with Caden Green is he played 90% of his snaps thereabouts at Oklahoma last year at left guard. And while some people might have thought maybe he wants to play left tackle again like he did in high school, it doesn't seem – there's no indication that he cares. In fact, I believe Caden Green himself specifically said he'll play wherever he needs to be, wherever he'll best help the team. And – Frankly, in this day and age where NFL guards are getting big time money, just like tackles are, well, why should Caden Green care? Honestly, the, the whole thing of the blind side, the Sandra Bullock movie, well, that's a bit outdated in terms of that being the only money position on the offensive line. Don't get me wrong, left tackle is still really important, and Javon Foster was definitely a pillar there for Missouri last season, but it sounds like Missouri will be good to go with either Caden Green 
or Marcus Bryant at left tackle. It just seems like that's more of a natural spot for Bryant. And because Green is flexible, both in terms of his physical ability to play both positions and seemingly his attitude as well, man, that really is a big boon for this Missouri offensive line, in my opinion. In fact, as I started thinking about it the last the last day or so after I posted yesterday is that episode just starting to hit me as a Missouri fan. Imagine being Marcus Carroll or Nate Noel right now or or any of the running backs for Missouri. You've got to be licking your chops right now. You already had Armand Mimbu on the right side, one of the best run blocking players I would say in the country last season certainly at right tackle Mimbu was just mauling people on a regular basis you got Connor Tolleson coming back who was wildly improved last season as a tiger he could absolutely take another step forward this season so I mean really there weren't a lot of questions at the offensive line now you're just upgrading one of the spots that was in somewhat of doubt there three of the five spots were basically solidified Now it's basically four out of five. I mean, there's just not a lot of questions on this offense to the point that if this young man, Marcus Bryant, is as good as he's advertised as this first-team All-AAC performer from SMU has been billed here, Missouri, gosh, I I almost don't want to say it out loud. I really don't want to say it out loud, but I'm going to anyway. Missouri has the potential to have the very best offense in the entire country in 2024. And, and and for as much as I hesitate to say that, what does Missouri lack at this point? What don't they have? And speaking of, my goodness, licking your chops if you're the running backs, how, how about Brady Cook right now? He's got to be in hog heaven thinking of adding yet another star type of another plus lineman to the locker room here. And if you think I'm getting too far ahead of myself here, too far over my skis, whatever the cliche is, remember, just this past season, Missouri, by S&P Plus, to me as good of a a metric as there is out there for measuring this stuff, they had the 13th best offense in the entire country last season. Now you've got the lion's share of the offensive line back. Plus, you're bringing in veteran production from other programs on the offensive line. You have tremendous veteran experience and production returning at quarterback, at receiver. The tight end room is hopefully upgraded. This could be a Brett Norfleet-type breakout season. Listen, I'm not trying to completely lose my mind here. I'm really not. I'm not predicting that Missouri is going to be the best offense in the country. They just have that upside. I'm just trying to put things into perspective here. I really am. So a top five, top 10 unit, I think we should be expecting that at this point. And coming up, let's open up the mailbag. Well, or at least the YouTube comments. How about that more accurately to close out? The show answers some questions, including if Mark Mitchell and Jaden Quaintance, could they actually fit together at the same time for Missouri? Let's talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. But first, it is playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on it all. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose again bet on everything from homers to dunks to slap shots all on an app that is safe secure and easy to use and i gotta say tonight looking at the nba slate the new york knicks kind of stick out tonight it really feels like the sixers are done at this point joel Embiid can protest all he wants but That knee, I I just don't see how they can possibly take it down. To me, plus 205 tonight, money line, I'm all over the New York Knicks tonight. But regardless, what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So after an incredible comeback 
by Michael Porter Jr. and the Denver Nuggets the other night over the Lakers and LeBron James. I mentioned that, my gosh, can we ever just go one day without people on on Twitter, for example, bringing up the Michael Jordan-LeBron debate? Who is the GOAT? I, to me, that is the most tiresome topic at the moment. Though, Sean on YouTube did tell me, he said, the Porter updates are becoming the LeBron MJ in terms of tiresome topics. You know what, Sean? I can't really argue with you there. I'm, I'm becoming tired of the Porter conversation as as well. And I'll say this. Have you ever seen the classic the Simpsons episode, the Stonecutters episode? Well, at some point in that club, or at some point in that episode, excuse me, Homer Simpson recalls a painful memory where he is excluded from a club that's called the No Homers Club. Well, Homer goes, wait a second, that guy's named Homer, and they're pointing out, hey, it's Homers. We can have one Homer. So that's what I'm going to do right here. We're going to create the No Porters Club. I think I'm done talking about Jonte Porter forever at this point. Javon Porter, hey, he's he's not at Missouri. I think same deal there. I don't know what other Porters I would talk about at this point, other than maybe, maybe occasionally Michael Porter Jr. If that comes up, hey, I hate to say it, I love the NBA. I can't 100% promise that his name will not be brought up on the program. But when it comes to Porters coming to the Missouri and all that stuff, I think we might actually be done there. So you know what, Sean? I think we're safe. I really do. But Richard on YouTube, another comment about Missouri basketball. This one about Jaden Quaintance, of course, the McDonald's All-American basketball player, just a really talented forward. This time in the process, well, he, he committed to Kentucky, John Calipari leaving. Could he be going to Arkansas? We'll see. But basically, Richard says, I can't see Jaden Quaintance playing behind Mark Mitchell for two years. Well, number one, that assumes that Mark Mitchell will be here for two years, and I don't think that that's a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. Mitchell, a former McDonald's All-American guy in his own right, if he can fix his shot at Missouri, he's got a chance to be an NBA player after just one year as a Tiger. So let's not assume that. Number one, I also don't assume at all, much more to the point, really, I don't think those two guys are mutually exclusive whatsoever. If you think about a couple years ago, how Kobe Brown and Noah Carter played together. Well, those two guys, you might think, well, they're, they're, uh, they're, Skill sets are maybe a little bit redundant. Carter, a little bit lesser of an offensive player than Kobe Brown, who's now an NBA player with the Clippers, obviously. But the point is, especially offensively, those guys did just fine together. It's not like they were getting in each other's way. In fact, they could space the floor for each other, pass the ball to each other. In fact, I think those guys work just fine together. I would see that very much the same with Jaden Quaintance and Mark Mitchell, although spacing, I suppose, could be a problem there. Neither one at this point is thought of as a three-point shooter, but I, I just, I don't know. I just wouldn't overthink it. Two guys who can move like that, especially Dennis Gates likes to play up-tempo basketball. You want to talk about a couple forwards that could run the floor, fill the lane, finish with authority, Mark Mitchell and Jaden Quaintance together? My goodness, I'd love to see what that looks like. That's definitely, that's not a problem in my opinion. That would be an interesting puzzle to figure out. And finally, after I finished off yesterday's program by opening a pack of Missouri football NIL trading cards, well, I had some people ask, hey, where do I get these cards? Well, quite honestly, there's a bunch of places you can get them. On it is one, on it, O N N I T. Well, Walmart, but really the easiest way, just plug it into a search engine, Google, whatever it might be. Just search for Mizzou Football NIL cards, and that'll get you home. There's several places where you can buy those packs of football cards. But Ronald on YouTube, on the cards, he said, Mizzou needs to promote those cards. I just ordered some. Do they have a NIL fund? to donate to. Well, that is interesting that a lot of Missouri fans who seem to be interested in donating still don't entirely know where to donate. I think Missouri and Laird Laird Veach, the new the new administrator here, the new athletic director, 
could probably do a better job of getting that information out there because it's not as though this is a secret here. The Tiger Fund, which I believe is still the sub, sub, what am I trying to say? The sub entity here of the Missouri, of the Tiger Scholarship Fund, which if you're a longtime season ticket holder, you're very aware of what the, of what TSF is, the Tiger Scholarship Fund. That's where you donate, essentially, to get your season tickets, yada, yada, yada. Well, basically, the Tiger Fund is a spinoff of the Tiger Scholarship Fund. Missouri has basically brought its NIL deal in-house because they can. The rules and laws in Missouri say that you can do that, and that's exactly what they're doing. So to me, if you're Missouri, you probably should do a little bit better job of actually getting that information out there to your fans, at least, if not outright soliciting for donations, because I don't know that that's legal. Maybe that's the issue here. But there's got to be a way to just make awareness, make make awareness of where fans can actually go to be part of the cause here. It's got to be a way around that, a way to just make awareness just better than it is currently. Because if people are asking me, that says that they're confused. So let, let's try to Let's try to eliminate that confusion. That's what I would try to do if I'm Laird Veach and everybody in the new administration anyway. But, hey, thanks as always for checking out Locked on Mizzou, of course, on tomorrow's program. We'll see if there are any Tigers going in the first round of the NFL draft. I'll have my reactions one way or the other, and who knows? Could be some more basketball players, football players. Man, there's just been a lot of news lately. Thanks for joining the program. I'll have whatever comes. I'll be here for you tomorrow right here on Locked on Mizzou.